What's up guys? I am editing this video on vacation while the baby sleeps. Uh, turns out it's a lot longer than I thought it would be, so I'm going to split it up into two parts. This is part one. Uh, items one through three on the list are going to be on this video. And then part two will be items four, five, and six of things that pet owners do that drive vets crazy. Hope you enjoy it. What's up guys, I'm Dr. Jim Cellini. I'm a board certified veterinary neurologist. On today's episode, I wanted to take a minute and talk about some things that maybe pet owners can do to help veterinarians. We've all seen videos from across the world over the last year and a half or so since the pandemic started of people uh, basically reaching a breaking point emotionally uh, and mentally, it seems. You see people freaking out in planes, airports, restaurants, all sorts of things everywhere. And as it turns out, inside of a vet hospital is no different. So just ask any vet, these blow-ups kind of happen on a daily basis if your clinic is of a certain size. And if it's of a smaller size, it's probably like a weekly basis. Things have just been really tough over the last year and a half. You see a higher and higher demand for pet care. People are owning more pets and vet hospitals are just getting overwhelmed and the result is more sick animals by default, by just by the numbers. And people are kind of reaching a breaking point now with their pets. And really the worst part of this phenomenon is that the people getting the brunt of these emotional outbursts are actually not the doctors. They're more likely to be the support staff, meaning like the front of the hospital. So employees like receptionists, tech assistants, even kennel workers, technicians, um, they're all really facing the emotional outbursts that owners are having seemingly more and more these days. Now me being a neurologist, I am obviously a specialist and I am on the top of Mount Privilege. Um, so I don't have to deal with these sorts of problems quite as much, at least directly, as my colleagues in general practice and emergency especially. So this video is geared a little bit more towards the ER and GP side of things. For this video, I wanted to go over a list of six things that owners do that drive vets crazy. And I mean that in the most loving way possible. I say drive us crazy because yes, they are kind of annoying things. But at the end of the day, this makes uh, our ability to care for your pet more difficult. So I polled about 20 of my uh, friends and colleagues across uh, all different sorts of specialties, ranging from primary care to ER to all different types of specialists. And I wanted to come up with a list of things that owners can maybe do a little bit differently or be aware of uh, that they are doing, that if they maybe change these things, it might help with their veterinary relationship um, and help get their pet a little bit better care. And it might remove a little bit of stress on both ends and kind of de-escalate the situation. I think that's kind of what we need these days is de-escalation. High hopes for this video, I know. But before I get started, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button, always helps me to grow the channel, and let's go. All right, item number one. This is by far the most common thing that my friends uh, informed me of and that they wish would change. And I gotta tell you, it's probably my number one too. This is owners waiting until they are out of medications entirely and then calling your facility to ask or sometimes demand uh, that we refill the medications right then and there. So just to kind of illustrate this point, the odds of a same day medication refill, especially for drugs that are controlled substances like many seizure medications are, is frankly pretty low. There's a lot of different lines of communication, like for instance, the person that calls and the owner that calls and requests a refill, the technician has to contact the doctor, the doctor has to approve it, that approval has to get faxed or called into the pharmacy, the pharmacy has to then fill it, check our credentials, and then call you and let you know that it's all ready. And that, you know, in theory has to happen within like, you know, six hours sometimes. Then that's just not really realistic a lot of the time. There's just too many moving parts to do in one day. But if you can maybe just watch for that one week mark to hit where you say, okay, I've got, so it's a twice a day medication. I've got 14 pills left. That's one week. I'm going to go ahead and call the vet now. If you can be a little bit proactive like that, that would go a huge way in reducing the amount of uh, work and the amount of stress that we have to put on our staff in addition to what we already have to try to get this all done in a, in a rushed manner. And you can see how a lot of mistakes might get made in trying to rush things as well. The doses might get written down incorrectly, filled in correctly, all that sort of thing. And that can be pretty serious too. So again, topic one, don't wait till the last minute to request a refill. Item number two, showing up late to your appointment or no showing your appointment. Now, 
I'm not speaking to anybody who has an emergency or whose pet passed away before the appointment. Anything like, obviously, I understand all that stuff. But if you are late, um, and especially if you no show, no call, you don't notify anybody that, that you're just you know not gonna show up for your appointment, that is something that I would really like to address with the pet owner population. And the reason is, going back to my original statement, which we all know to be true, ask any vet nowadays, the demand for veterinary care is as high as it's ever been um, in the history of veterinary medicine. The appointment slots that we have are very valuable. You know, the more demand for the care, there's a higher value to the appointment time, um, you know, supply demand curve there. But um, not showing up to an appointment basically means that the veterinarian has spent, you know, a good amount of time reviewing their records and making sure that they're prepared for the appointment now for no reason. But also there's usually a waiting list of appointments and, and pets that need to be seen for something. I know I'm booked out two to three weeks and most people are as well. I know our cardiologist is booked out like six weeks. So if you schedule an appointment but you don't show up to it, that means there's anywhere between one and like 20 pets who need to get in who could have taken that appointment but now we're kind of on the waiting list still. So you can see how that's just not ideal for anybody. You should just be aware of how valuable an appointment slot is uh, before you come in. Or if you feel like your pet's just getting better and you're not sure, um, you know, I, I would maybe call the clinic you know, at least 24 hours beforehand and be like, look, I think things are fine. What do you want me to do? Uh, at least give us proper notice you know, if you're gonna cancel or uh, be late or you need to reschedule. Um, please don't leave things to the same day, just like the, the drug refills. Don't leave it to the same day to just decide not to come in. That, that's you know, suboptimal, as we say. All right, so topic number three. This gets into a little bit more of like a, uh, like a more rude sort of a thing. Yeah, this one is when an owner asks, are you old enough to be a doctor? So this definitely happened to me when I was an intern in South Florida. This happened to me a couple times that year. You know, you look, maybe maybe it's the whites of your eyes because you're brand new and you just don't, you know, you don't have experience yet and you're just terrified of like emergencies and stuff like that. But I had an owner ask me, you know, what's, what's your first name? Because I don't want to call you Dr. Cellini. I, I need to know you by your first name. And I told her my first name was Doctor. <laughs> So that didn't really go over well, and I had to talk to the office manager about that one, but um, I'm kind of glad in retrospect that I stood up for myself because honestly, like nobody really has the right to just demand to call you by your first name. But if I can advise owners on one thing, it would be A, never say that just because it's really rude, um, but also judge the doctor on their capabilities. If you're not vibing with them and they're not saying something that you really understand or they're not explaining it well, I totally get it. Like you have the right to get a second opinion, talk to another doctor. If you're at the ER, you have the right to talk to your primary care doctor if you're not sure about stuff. I totally understand all of that. Um, but don't judge somebody based on their youth because I've certainly seen a huge difference between younger doctors and older doctors in favor of the younger doctors. And vets don't have to look like Dr. Pohl in order to have a really accomplished skill set and experience. In fact, I would kind of argue that a lot of veterinarians tend to get smarter as they get younger, in many cases just because the field is expanding, we're constantly researching and finding out new ways, new kind of latest and greatest, either technologies or procedures or thought processes behind diseases, how to treat them and manage them. So a lot of times younger vets know things that older vets don't. So by surely just kind of going by age, you know, never mind being super rude, it just really doesn't help you uh, in any way, shape or form. And it doesn't make any sense to kind of think that way. I, I mean, I would never say that to somebody. I don't know. I can't, I can't even imagine being in the mindset to actually be that rude to somebody. But I've had it done to me and a ton of people I know have had it done to them too. If anybody's ever said that to you, leave it in the comments and let me know. Always love to hear those stories. I All right guys, that was part one. Check out part two. I'll post it later today. Thanks a lot.